All right, welcome back to Business Insights to our discussion segments now. The Dangote Refinery, the world's largest single train refinery, was commissioned yesterday by President Buhari in Lagos. The refinery, which has a capacity of 650,000 barrels per day, is expected to meet 100% of Nigeria's demand for refined petroleum product and have a surplus for export. The refinery is also expected to create thousands of jobs, boost fuel supplies across Africa, and generate foreign exchange earnings for Nigeria by exporting 40% of its product. It is part of a $20 billion complex that includes a fertilizer plant and a power station. The refinery is seen as a game changer for Nigeria's economy and the downstream petroleum product market in the entire African region. Joining me right now is uh, Professor Chris Irene Imamolin, an educationist, a university professor, a serial entrepreneur, a business mogul, and a Nigerian politician. He is the founder of Joint Professional Training and Support International Limited, JPTS, and Unique Foundation, and the presidential candidate on the platform of the Accord Party. Many thanks for joining me, Professor Imamolin. Uh, Professor, can you hear me? If you can unmute your device, I can barely hear what you're saying. Okay, so thank you, Mr. Justin, for having me on your show today. All right, now we can hear you. So yesterday was a very big deal for Nigeria and the most parts of Africa because uh, the Dangote refinery was commissioned and actually set Nigeria on the, and on the face of the world and the map of the world. You know, but let me understand it in real terms since you are part of um, the industry, the oil and gas, and uh, specifically the downstream sector. How important is this for Nigeria's downstream sector? You know, for, for us um, in Nigeria, it's, it's a good thing that at this time we are having a refinery that um, is situated on about 6,180 hectares, you know. Yesterday I was telling someone, I said the refinery is even, the land size is larger than the entire Victoria Island, which is about 800 hectares. So the investment is huge, about $20 billion, about $19, $20 billion invested. It's a huge one. And it's a good one for us because um, for a very long time, at least we have a refinery that will work. Though a lot of people have said that it's privately owned. But it may, it may, just I wanted to remember that um, even Nigeria have a joint um, investment in it. The FEC had approved um, some amount of money, which also involves uh, the Nigerian involvement in the in the refinery as a stakeholder. So that therefore means that we now have a refinery and um, which of course we know has a capacity of um, refining about 650,000 barrels per day. And it has a capacity of producing over 50 million liters of um, um, gasoline a day. You know, that uh, would serve a lot of need and you know, and the issue of importation and importing refined crude oil to a large extent, we believe by the time the refinery kick off fully, um, we will have just in time products on our doorstep. And the delay of having to import products from outside the shores of Nigeria, you know, would be would be jettisoned. So we can have our crude. But it's not really about whether it's privately owned or government owned. What we are, what we, particularly me and those in the industry are concerned is that at least we have a refinery that will work for our, for our, for our economy. We have jobs being provided. A refinery that has been estimated to provide over 125,000 jobs directly or indirectly. You know, and the economic viability is there. Mm. And again, this refinery, like I must tell you, would put Nigeria back into the map of oil producing nation in the world. Remember, Nigeria has always stopped um, Africa as the largest oil reserve con um, country mm. behind Libya. So it's, it's a good one for us in Nigeria. All right. It's a, yeah, and it's the right investment for the oil and gas industry that have witnessed a lot of setback okay. over the years. All right, I still want to understand some of the gains. No, I know you have said it's a good one for the nation's uh, industry, petrochemicals and all of that. But some are saying that with the uh, oncoming of this refinery, that the price of petrol will actu actually reduce. How true is this in the wake of um, the federal government's plan to uh, remove subsidy on um, PMS? With this uh, uh, refinery 
Our prices of uh, petroleum products are going to reduce drastically in the country, hopefully. Okay, let's look at statistics now. This refinery will be able to produce about 50 million liters of gasoline and 15 million liters of diesel in a day. But the Nigerian needs for liter per day for PMS is about 66.8 million liters. So even if, for example, the, uh, the refinery is going to be working optimally, it cannot yet, for now, generate what Nigeria consumes because what Nigeria consumes is far more. That is one. Number two, we must know that um, the cost of freight, let's look at freight of importing the PMS um, from whatsoever refinery, whether it's from Germany, it's from Belgium, it's from cost and approximately about 26 naira per liter. And NMPC at the time said they spent about 800, and the price even shot up from 861 billion to um, about trillion just to have petroleum imported. Into not, I'm not talking about subsidy, I'm talking about price on freight alone. 861 billion was spent in July. So what we are going to be seeing is that at least the price is going to drop considering that um, the logistic cost of logistics of bringing in finished products and taking out crude would have reduced. You know, logistics plays a whole lot of role in the cost of uh, PMS, DPK, and AGO. So that by itself will reduce the price. But again, you know that um, there was a speculation that also said that once subsidy is removed, because we are also trying to see what the next administration will do regarding subsidy. Once subsidy is removed, Nigeria will pay in close to about 462 naira per liter. So, so in all, whether subsidy is removed or is not removed, the price of per liter would, would reduce. And remember, Dangote Refinery is privately run, so it's run for business. Um, so it all depends on the policy of the government. But looking at it is a good one for our country. Um, the price of producing a liter of um, PMS, AGO, and DPK from the Dangote Refinery is cheaper than importing um, finished products from any part of the world. So whatever government will be doing with um, with subsidy, you know, of course, uh, will be dependent on the next administration, which we believe um, right. they will look critically into. All right, thank you for addressing the issue of um, logistics costs for importing fuel. So um, let's just move on and talk about um, the impact. Uh, what impact will it have, or how does it impact on the pressure or drive for foreign exchange in the country? Will it actually reduce? Of course, it will. It will have a lot of impact. You saw the inauguration yesterday. A lot of West African countries, um, leaders, presidents were, were around. And the purpose of that is because for them, it's also a good one for West African countries who will be having products go to Lome, products go to Bene, go to Accra, go to Ghana, and other sub saharan African down to Europe. So it's going to drive a lot of foreign investment to Nigeria. You can, amount, you can look at the amount of foreign... Yeah, it's going to become the largest, the largest source of um, um, foreign, um, what's it called, investment to our country, considering the huge um, volume of production. We have. We're talking about 50 million liters of PMS per day. That is huge. So it's massive. It's going to become the largest single source of foreign, um, what's it called, exchange to our country, which is very good. Other areas is uh, we are looking at the area of human capacity de development. You now have um, on ground, you know, our three refineries, the LMF Petrochemical, the Wari Refinery, the Kaduna Refinery, none of them for a very long time mm. had worked optimally. And that, to a large extent, has affected the oil and gas industry. You know, again, we've had companies like Shell Chevron, who had been in Nigeria for many years, but had not, have not been able to, on their own, invested in a refinery. What they've been doing for many years is exploit, um, 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 exploration. Um, es uh, uh, yes, exploring oil from our from our reserve and taking it out to to to, to refine. But for the first time, we're having a privately owned single. We call it um, the single train refinery, which yeah. means that it's one integrated distill distilling system that can you know can do all in one distilling system. So there is going to be huge impact in terms of foreign um, investment into our country in terms mm -hmm. of addition to our GDP, mm. in terms of employment creation, in terms of human capital development, training on hand. You know, we visit a country like Louisiana, a state like Louisiana. All right. We have a refinery in Louisiana alone 
absorbs almost all the students in the oil and gas department in Louisiana. I'm from the oil and gas background, and I know what this will do in terms of training Nigerians to become oil and gas leaders, not just in Nigeria, in Africa. Exporting even human capital capacity, human beings who are trained in this in this aspect to become Rostaba, to become Derek Man, to become All right. you know environmental experts All right, to other parts of the uh, as we wrap so, up now, as we wrap up now, I just want to get one more question so we can wrap up now. You've talked about um, the lots of um, impact it will have directly on Nigerians and, of course, uh, the, the outlook globally. I still want to talk very quickly. I just want you to answer this very quickly. The impact on the value chain and, of course, other byproducts if we are going to see some changes. Because before now, I heard that when we um, uh, take out our crude, uh, we just bring back um, you know, the refined um, product. But uh, some of the other byproducts are actually lost in the process. What changes would we see this time around? Of course, you know, um, we, call, we call it byproduct, but it's no more byproduct because it's not waste. We talk about the coal tar. We talk about even the gases that um, are being trapped from the, uh, from the reservoirs. The, this particular refinery have the capacity to also um, at least um, what's it called? extract gases that are, that are emanating from crude itself. This um, particular refinery has the ability to ensure that we have available on ground um, all the byproducts of um, of the crude oil. So we, we would be seeing um, a situation in coming years where even the construction companies, you know, even the petrochemical companies and the rest would, would really have um, a lot of um, raw materials to work with because of um, what the refinery will be producing. And again, by you talk about from byproducts, change, you talk about the value chain, <laughs> it's a whole lot. You know, we talk about the indirect capacity, the indirect opportunities that the refinery would, would, would get. To. I just made mention that the refinery by itself is situated in a 6,180 hectares of land. That is huge. It's a state on its own. So you can imagine what will happen, not just to that immediate environment, what will happen to even neighboring communities, neighboring states, by the virtue of, you know, you talk about um, people, Nigeria will not have access so what will happen to depots? What will happen to farm tanks who would have waited many months to get products? You know, there's something called just in time. Product to be delivered as quick as possible. And I want to believe with good management, we've seen what Bangote have been doing with other industries. And I believe that this particular family will be having a very top-notch management. Um, Nigerians, we can just say bye-bye to um, shortage of PMS or um, what's it called? Incident supply of fuel to Nigerian people, and that is again is very good for power. Look at the power industry also would have enough supply of them. Um, as you remember, even from what they have, they have about the forty-five megawatts or forty-five five hundred four hundred fifty megawatts of power installed there. Imagine what that will do. Not just to the power that is produced is not only for that facility. All right, thank you, Professor Chris. Uh, there's a whole lot to talk about, uh, you know, uh, the expectation, of course, the impact. Uh, it is actually very massive, but we have to go for the sake of time. Uh, I must say a very big thank you to you. I have been speaking with uh, Christopher, Professor Christopher Imamolin. Uh, he holds many feathers to his cap. Educationist, university professor, serial entrepreneur, business mogul, and, of course, a Nigerian politician. Many thanks for being a part of Business Insights today. Thank you so much for having me. All right, and that's the size of the show for today. Business Insights will return again tomorrow. My name is Justin Akadonia. Many thanks for watching. Bye for now.